Here are eight common mistakes that I see people make in high asset divorces. My name is Laura Hurd, and I'm an attorney who has been helping people get divorced in San Antonio, Texas since 1987. And so for over 35 years, I've seen these same mistakes made over and over again that can really hurt you if you have a lot of assets in trying to divide them up divorce. The first one is trying to hide assets. If you are the one who has the access to hide assets, say if you're running a company or you have some accounts that your spouse doesn't know about, it is best to put them all out on the table. When we do discovery and we do sworn inventories, if you hide those things or if you try to give them to a friend to hold for you until the divorce is over, that's going to cost you big time. In fact, the judge can find you in contempt or even find that you committed perjury, which is a crime. And so you don't want to get in that position where you lose everything because you were trying to hide a few things. The second mistake I see is when a spouse doesn't really know what all the assets are and they're in such a hurry to get divorced that they don't take the time to find out. It's important to let your attorney do their job and discover what all the assets and all the debts are so that they can be divided in a fair way and in the way that's most beneficial to you. You don't want to find out 10 years later that your spouse had a million dollars in the bank that you didn't know about and there's nothing you can do about it because nobody ever asked. So let your attorney do the discovery that's needed in order to know what the assets are before you start dividing things up. Third is letting a sense of entitlement stop you from settling. A lot of times you have one spouse who stayed at home and another spouse who worked long, long hours and built up a lot of assets. And the one that worked long hours and built up assets feels like that they should be the one that gets to keep all of those assets because it was their blood, sweat, and tears, or they're the ones that saved up for the retirement. But we're a community property state, and the judge is going to divide things equally. The other side of that coin is the spouse that stayed home and feels like they sacrificed their career, they put up with your abuse, they raised your kids, and now that they're old, you're throwing them away, and they feel like they're entitled to be compensated for all those years that they supported you while you were making that money. So just realize that there's two points of view here, and in reality, anything earned during the marriage is going to get divided equally between the two of you. So don't let that stop you from settling because you feel like you deserve more. And also, there is the possibility that one side's having an affair. And you feel like the other side is more at fault, so they should be punished. Don't let that stop you from settling. A lot of times, even though the judge may hear the evidence of who's at fault, the judge is going to consider that there's some fault on both sides, and they are going to just divide things equally. So just go ahead and work out an, a fair settlement rather than trying to hold on to that bitterness about the other side being at fault for the breakup of the marriage. The the fourth one is not hiring the right attorney. If you think that the best thing to do is to hire an attorney who's aggressive, mean, who's going to fight for you and just take the other side to the cleaners, that is in the end going to cost you a lot of money. Keep in mind that divorce attorneys always work by the hour and the more aggressive that that attorney is, the more fighting that's done, the more it's going to cost you. And in the end, the only one who may end up having all the money is the attorney because you spend it all on attorney's fees. So look for an attorney who is going to be diligent and make sure that they do what's right for you and fair for you, but one who is going to also be reasonable and practical in terms of the size of your estate versus the amount of time that is spent fighting over the estate. Because it is really easy to spend all of your time fighting over the estate and then spend all of your money on attorney's fees and there's nothing left for you to divide up in the end. The fifth one is not considering tax issues. Remember that some assets may look like they're equal on the surface, but they have different tax consequences. And so they may not be as valuable as they look like when you consider the tax consequences. It's important to have a financial planner, a CPA, and some someone to consult with besides your attorney to help you decide on which assets are going to be most beneficial to you in the long run, considering all of the investment and tax aspects 
aspects of those assets. And six is not recognizing that two people cannot live as cheaply together, I mean, apart as they did together, and two people who are dividing their assets are going to have to change their lifestyles. There's just no way that when the divorce is over with that you're going to be better off financially than you were when you were together. You are going to have twice as many expenses and have, and that's just the fact of getting divorced. You're starting over. You need to have someone to advise you on making a budget and learning how to live with less because there's no way that we can take all of your assets, divide them between two people, and you end up with more than what you had before. And seven is not realizing that child support is more complicated when you have a lot of assets. If your income is over the cap, for standard child support, you're going to be looking at what is reasonable for the child to be kept in the manner that the child is accustomed to and to take care of those child's needs in the way that the child has been raised before. And so it is a lot more complicated and it takes more attorney time and attorney money to try to figure out the best way to have child support that fits the needs of a child who's used to a higher income than what the cap is on standard child support. And eight is not seriously considering mediation. Mediation is successful more than 80% of the time. It helps you in a confidential and private way to work out a settlement where you took the time to work out something that made sense to you. The mediator is trained in helping parties reach a compromise. And so often I see clients who don't want to go to mediation because they think the other side is not going going to be reasonable. The reality is when they do go to mediation, a lot of times they're really surprised at how the mediator is able to get the other side to be reasonable and a compromise is worked out. And not only is the case more likely to settle if it goes to mediation, but a settlement agreement is going to be enforced by the courts and the parties are more likely to follow the terms of the decree of divorce after divorce when they have worked it out through mediation. So it's important to keep all of those things in mind, to have an attorney who has experience and who can guide you through the process. My name is Laura Hurd. I've been helping folks get divorced in San Antonio, Texas for more than 35 years, and I'd be happy to discuss these things with you further.